What's up, everybody? It's Kylie from Ground Zero Radio, powered by the Vera Project, and I'm here today with two special guests. I'm Kate McCarthy. I'm Mariana Carvajal. And I just got to meet these lovely individuals because we are at the Nifty Festival, and I saw their film. Can you just give us a short little introduction about, like, what's it about? Hmm. Shall I, shall I begin? Oh, Go ahead. Sure. <laughs> um, yes, I'm Kate. I'm a writer, director, producer. Um, you know, actually, this weekend has really shown me it's not that pitchable. Like, I want to work on that. It's not like when one man finds a penny on the street, he must have a quest. No, it's basically like it's about a really um, lonely, alienated teenage girl who doesn't have a lot going for her. Uh, it's a small life told big. Um really colorful and uh, musical, luscious, but about like some really brutal loneliness um, and alienation, teenage. Um, it's about a girl who uh, basically like does the biggest thing she's ever done, which is she steps up to the plate and decides to audition to be a cantor at her Christian high school. That is Mira, played beautifully by Mariana. Awesome, and how did you guys actually meet each other? So Kate actually reached out to me on backstage. Hey. She, Crazy. Yeah, she asked me to audition. Mm -hmm. uh, the audition was uh, I had to send in a piece that reflected what loneliness feels like to me. And I had to sing of it and I had to dance of it. And I ended up writing a piece. I, I didn't really know what I was going to do and I was like stressing over the audition because I was like, what does that mean? What A piece on loneliness, what does that mean? So I wrote something. And I sent it in, and like a couple weeks later, Kate reached out, and we had a callback, and this is crazy. This is blowing my mind. I didn't know you wrote what you <laughs> performed. For. This is an on-air discovery. I didn't know that you wrote that. You didn't know? I didn't tell and you. Now I have to go back and like watch it. Oh, and no, like don't, read. no, no. Okay, <laughs> I, I, I will delete it. I'll delete the file. Wow. I remember being like, "What is this from? This is beautiful." Truly, she. I for yeah. Not a crazy story. I found her on backstage, and she's one of the first um, when I because it's crazy. You can filter people by like everything, which I don't know how I feel about that. It's kind of freaky, but I get it for casting. And she, based on all those filters, like is one of the first faces I saw, and I was like, well, that she looks perfect. Let's hope she can act. But I still was like, I literally went through like a thousand backstage pages just to be thorough, and I still end ended up with Mariana and like just the most beautiful tape, just so fresh, and she looked like no one else on backstage because she just looked real and, and fresh and open, singular. And then, yeah, we had um, more of a workshop than a callback, and I just remember that you brought in printed, like you had printed out the whole script, and I was like, okay, this actor is on her shit. Like, <laughs> other people would not do that, and she really was just lovely. It was, a per it was kismet, it was perfect. Is this the first uh, film that you've been acting in? Yeah, yeah, that was my uh, first film. I, I was still in uh, acting school when I auditioned and like fresh out of acting school when we when we filmed it. Where did you go to acting school? Uh, American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Oh, dope. Yeah. That's so cool. And so are you guys both from L.A.? Um, well, we're there now, yeah. Yeah. but uh, I'm from San Francisco. I like moved to L.A. on accident, like really like part of why I decided to be like, I think maybe I should stay was to make this film. And now I'm still just writing it out. But Mariana's from like several places. Uh, yeah, well, my family's from Colombia originally. I was born in America and I lived in England as a kid for a bit. Um, but um, I lived in Northern California for like uh, high school and I moved to LA for college and that's where I am now. Bam, got look her, at that. Got her for her first. It was my first film, and it was her first, film. first it was, film. It was perfect. Yeah. It was so cute. And what inspired you to make the film? Um. Well, my whole thing is that I was, like, just doing comedy. Like, I went to college, and I was, like, a theater kid in high school, uh, and I was, like, rebelling at the lack of control, I think. Um, and so I went hard at comedy because you can – right and then boom go right on stage that to an open mic you don't have to pay well some some of them but you don't go to those um anyway uh i had just been doing comedy 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 and then during the pandemic i really stepped away and watched as my peers did not step away like they were still going and something in me just was like i don't want to be consumable right now or like i started looking at 
the internet in a different way and like personalities and like presenting yourself as a performer. And I just was like, I don't really think this is actually serving me. And I don't think this is the best use of my skills. And I also had all these ideas that I realized like they were in my joke notebook, but they were like visual. They were like, what about the idea of like a girl, like in the film, you know, taking, you know, being asked to take a photo of her friends, but selfie style. So you are <laughs> holding up the phone but you have to duck down below it to capture still the energy of a selfie. And you can't go on stage and describe that. And I realized like, oh, maybe my brain is going in this way anyway. And so I just had time during the pandemic to like sit with this. And I was like, wow, what if my best fit is like to step away and like craft something bit by bit and then present it. And yeah, I just had all these ideas and have always been a, a big film nerd. So this was like the perfect culmination. Wow. Everything just kind of came together. Really, big time. That's so cool. And that part in the it was so sad. I was like, <laughs> oh man, she's got to hold it. And your face was so funny. You're just dead in the eye. That was perfect. Yeah. And what was like one of your main influences while making it? Yeah. Um, our mood board. Um, a, a mood board. Look wise, um, Edward Scissorhands, um, The Virgin Suicides. That's also tonal. I'd say all of these are like looks and tone. What um, Virgin Suicides? Uh, yeah, um, uh, palindromes and happiness, which are two Todd Solondz movies, and um, they're pretty harsh. They're pretty brutal, and so I'm doing like a more a lighter fantasy world, but I really wanted to still keep the heart of that. You know, br just like a tough um, emotional core. And um, I also love Election. That is a huge film for me. So um, shout out Alexander Payne. Email me back. Um, <laughs> um, and then also, let's see. Oh, randomly, uh, Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice. Am I getting the sequ that the um, Paul Mazursky movie? Uh, because the ending of our film has this kind of like break from reality, but it also it is reality, but it's uh, it could be interpreted as not, and it's like out of the realm of everyday happenings a little bit. It's like a move for sure. And it's, uh, uh, I was really inspired there by uh, the ending of Bob and Ke uh, Carol and Ted and Alice. Cause that I think is one of the most incredible film endings of all time, maybe. Uh, what would you say was your favorite part of like the process and making the film? Okay. This is why I'm like ready to commit my life to film. I was like, this is the perfect, like fit for my skill set because like a, a on a micro budgety level like you got to be a little corporate you got to know how to send those emails and like go through your to-do list and so that was like okay i was really happy to do that work i i loved being productive and collaborating with our amazing producer khalid and watching people get excited and so i loved getting people excited about the film and like uh oh, narc alert. I liked being a leader and like and and being tasked with getting people to um, want to come on board. And then on set, I don't know if this answers the question exactly, but it's like the biggest high I've ever had. Like it, even more than like being on. It felt like the um, burst of energy you get in a five minute you know stand up set, mm -hmm. but like sustained throughout the whole day, and you feel a little crazy, but also like really in your element, at least on a good day. Maybe we got lucky. And honestly, it was like the first time that I like saw the woman I want to be. Like like as a comedian, I loved it. And I like, uh, yeah, I, I love comedy still, but I never really couldn't like see past 30 weirdly. Or like I, can, I couldn't like, I, when I thought like, who will you be? I couldn't really see it. And literally directing one damn short film and I was like, I want to age into this. I think I'll only get better as I age. I like it's. It makes me want to get older and grow up more for the first time ever. So, I loved all of that <laughs> on set. Wow. Um. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about the woman you want to become. <laughs> um. Um. It 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 was just a, an amazing experience overall. I mean, the. I really didn't know what to expect. I was very nervous because it was my first film. Um, because we, from the moment I was cast to the moment that we started filming, we had like a couple months before that. So I had a lot of time to like think about like, mm. oh my God, <laughs> this is gonna be so scary. I don't know, what if 
Kate, I, I'm on set, and Kate is like, we made a mistake. She's <laughs> terrible. Bye. So, um, no, but it was great. Everyone was amazing. The crew, uh, the other actors, it was just, I feel like I learned a lot from everyone. I feel like that's kind of like a very basic answer, but it's true. I, I, I it was a, an amazing experience, and I'm so grateful to <sighs> the Kate you know, was she's a star. Chose me. <laughs> she is a star. And uh, you did have time to build it up. Like I gave yeah. you like a playlist, like maybe yes. this, m maybe this could be like what Mira might listen to. Oh, and I forgot huge influence had her watch Muriel's wedding. That is really probably the closest like kindred spirit to our little movie. Um, yeah. And on set, I also, one of my favorite things was watching you prepare because she mm -hmm. is young trained a little but like she's not like 50 years old and like on the like globe theater like in the uk like an old like uh, rsc actor and watching you you were doing something internal like you had a process that is your own that i don't want to even know about i don't want to like muddy the water and she would just sit and like get in this zone it was beautiful i love that as well on set. hey i i hate to break it or like maybe just plug your ears for a second because I did want to ask you about like the acting process like did you find it hard to kind of get into character <laughs> or was it kind of easier for you you know it I I relate a lot to Mira like a lot and that's something that we talked about a lot uh, when we first met is how much I was like Mira when I was in school and still am in, in a lot of ways um, so it was just kind of tapping into that a little bit, but also just like having this amazing director who I could like trust to, you know, guide me in the right way and help me like just do the character justice and do the, the film justice, which I, I hope I was able to do. Um, and, and yeah, Muriel's Wedding. Um, I had never heard of that movie. Uh, I love Tony Collette, but I'd never seen that movie. So when Kate told me to watch it, I, I watched it and it was a, a big influence as well for me. So yeah. Yeah. God. She, you're just so naturally expressive. Like you have to do so little, and it's all there, baby. <laughs> and yeah, it's just uh, it's great. And yeah, like we we connected, and that's another thing in terms of inspiration. Like when I was like, hmm, maybe I want to do film. This felt like the perfect first foray into film because it felt like this film is my heart. Like this is like me worst case scenario, or like me if a couple key things about me were different or had gone differently. Like it is the the true like feelings I carry through the world, even though those things did not happen to me. And I always felt that Mariana got that. And, and then it was easy. Like I really directed her almost none. She just had it. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about this later. We'll talk about this in the car. <laughs> what is like uh, a main goal that you guys both have for the future? Mm. Or I guess what would be like the dream? for each of you. Damn. Do you have something off the bat? Do you want me to improvise? <laughs> um, to cover for time? <laughs> uh, well, actually, yeah, you, well, you know, I'm, I'm auditioning for stuff and looking for projects, but I, I've been toying with the idea of writing and maybe directing in the future. It's something that I find very intimidating, but actually going to Nifty and being able to see all these projects and all these like amazing young filmmakers and these like insane ideas and how like well they executed it, it I'm very inspired right now, and I feel like that's like something that I'd like to explore in the future. That rocks. That could you couldn't get a better soundbite for <laughs> Nifty. Thank you, <laughs> Nifty. Or you're welcome. Shout out to Nifty. That rocks. Um. Well, my whole thing right now is I'm trying to figure out if I'm gonna go to film school or not. I put down a <laughs> deposit, but we'll see. Um. Okay. Shout out to. Um. There is an indie feature made by Graham Mason called Inspector Ike. It just played here in LA. And it's like a period piece. It's like kind of a takeoff on uh, like 70s, like Columbo vibes, like 70s kind of cop, um, not exclusively cop, but like, and it's like heavy comedy. And so I'm not like looking to do like heavy comedy full on features, but he used people that he loves and works with in um, the like Brooklyn alternative scene. And he just did the thing. He like he made something really singular and unique with people he loves on his own terms. I guess I don't know if this is right or wrong, Graham, and like low budget. Uh, and it's that that is all I really aspire to do, honestly. Like 
I don't know what it even means to try and like make a lot of money doing this. I just would love to make uh, a, a kind of, oh, also I love Miranda July and me and you and everyone we know, something like that. Like I'd love to do like um, a Todd Solonzy, Magnolia, me and you and everyone we know, like disparate vignettes and stories using like all these incredible comedians that I have loved for so, so long. So like just a, a feature, just making indie features, man. That would that would rock. That sounds awesome. No, I'm inspired. <laughs> <laughs> let's make right now. Let's, let's go. Make, yeah. Also, where can we uh, like check out your film and watch it and everything? This is huge. I got to share this with Mariana just maybe today. We're premiering on. I'm not on that camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the film is going to be premiering online and living um, on No Budge amazing uh, aggregate streaming amazing site for um low budget indie work from emerging directors so and i'm so like honestly honored so many people that i look up to and admire have work on there and then it will also be on um this a similar site like aggregate stream whatever site for shorts and other things called director's notes um not sure when it'll be on there but may 12th on no budge and then on director's notes see it as well and Free. you guys have an Instagram, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the short film Insta. I kind of like to use it as a Finsta. Um, and it's just uh, at Look Mira Film. And we follow one account only. You might think it's me, right, that I would use that account to like get myself another follower. No. We follow um, this account called Brad Pitt Official. <laughs> and um, official is spelled wrong. <laughs> and it's awesome. They post like crazy face tuned, uh, like airbrush photos of Brad Pitt all day, and I get a notification every time. <laughs> Even the notification? Yeah. That's too funny. A lot. <laughs> um, is there any way that people can donate or support any of your other projects, or even this one? Mm, I don't have anything yet for a um kickstarter or fundraising but yeah i mean toss a follow to the look mira account um that would be really nice honestly follow us on instagram these days it's about that i'm slime i'm at slime man 666 um, at mariana car m-u-n c-a-r-m-u-n not as interesting as kate's <laughs> But yeah, I mean, do you have any links? Yeah, you should use this interview to like be like, I have just some money for fun. <laughs> uh, My cash yeah, just send is. me money, please. Um, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, but Nothing, that's, yeah. I, we appreciate that. That's nice. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's been Kylie here at Ground Zero Radio where we listen to be heard. And this has been an interview with my special guests. I'm Kate McCarthy. I'm Mariana Carvajal. Here talking about our short film, Look Mira. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll catch you next time.